Welcome to b and gang. This your boy, Brandon. Yeah, that's right. The coolest YouTuber ever. And I'm back with another video. And in this video, I know you read that title. I'm doing a tips and tricks on the Logitech Folio Touch. On pretty much on the, the trackpad. Just to show you guys some um, things you may or may not know uh, that I learned just from playing with it for the last maybe three, four days. So, yeah, if you guys ready, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's dive right in. So the purpose of this video is for the people who haven't bought the Folio Touch, but they're thinking about it and they haven't uh, bought the Magic Apple Magic Keyboard and they haven't seen the videos and they want to know, you know, how to, how does it work? How does the trackpad work? How does the, the uh, gestures work and everything. So in this video, that's what I want to tell you to teach you a little, little bit of tips and tricks for those who don't know. You know, and then those who may have seen a couple videos and, you know, maybe some of my tips and tricks you haven't seen. I don't know, but that's why I made this video. So for the people who, who haven't really seen how the, the keyboard works, you could just tap to wake it. It'll read your eyes and three finger gesture to up to go home. And the first thing you want to do when you first get the keyboard or well, like what I like to do is go to go to settings. Go to settings. Then you want to go to general, then you want to go to keyboard, and then you can go to, you can go to hardware keyboard, hardware keyboard, and then in here is where technically it automatically adjusts the keyboard brightness. Let's see if it can show it. Let's see if I dim it the screen with that move. Like, I don't know if you've seen that move. See, see, it automatically adjusts the keyboard depending how bright. Let's see. More. There you go. Depending on how bright, I don't know if you can see the keyboard lit up, but that automatically adjusts, and that's a good thing. So that's one thing you want to you want to go in there just to make sure that the brightness is working. But you have to download the actual app, and I'll show you that. This is the actual Logitech control app. As soon as you pair your iPad to this to this keyboard, it takes you here. It takes you straight there. And then in there, it just you just check that and it just updates and allow you to use the brightness of the keyboard. Then you want to go back to settings. You can go to accessibility and then in accessibility, you can go to pointer, <clears throat> excuse me, pointer control. And in here you can adjust the, the increase the contrast. That's cool. Or auto, you can have automatically hide the pointer. So this hides. If you can see this, this the pointer hides after a few seconds. I like to keep it on. Some people may not. And then in here, this is the color. I normally go with red because that's my favorite color, but you have a bunch of choices and you can adjust the stroke size. But like I say, I just like to go with red because that's my favorite color, but you can even adjust the pointer size. And you go, let's see, let's make it real big. See, that's how you adjust the pointer size. If you want it that big, I don't, actually like it that big but i like it about well for the point of this video i put it a little big so you guys can see it better and then <clears throat> the point of animations is another thing that i think comes on but i don't really like it and i'll tell you why like when you touch something it actually can you see that it actually highlights the entire box and i don't really like that no matter let me go back to show you what i mean like every app you go to it highlights it and brings it like like a 3D effect. Some people like that. Nothing wrong with that. But I personally don't like it. So I turn it off. Then you can adjust the scrolling speed. I keep mine normally where it's at. Well, no, a little bit higher. I think it came like right here or something. I keep it like right at this little line. But you can make it faster. Let's see. Let's see how rapid it is. Oh, yeah. That's that's real fast. If you can see the keyboard really moving, it's real fast. So let's go to Turtle and see. Uh, but I think that's the, let me see. That's the actual gesture of the scrolling, of the actual scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. That's not for the actual mouse, for the actual uh, pointer. It's for the scrolling speed. That's what it's saying, scrolling speed. Eh. I didn't realize you can even make it faster like that. Even, even faster. Okay. Because that is... That's that's fast. Eh, it makes it feel like the iPad is even faster that way. So that's another one that you can do. 
Then, um, let's see. Some more stuff uh, that I like. You can go here. It's an actual keyboard. You can use your know, shortcuts and there's nothing really you want to be in here. There's nothing special about in here. But it's a bunch of little things that you could do to, like, for an example, three fingers is to swipe up. Two fingers is to scroll left or right. You keep scrolling just with two fingers. Now, say if you want to get to your multitasking screen, you just drag all the way up with three fingers and it'll bring you to it. And then from here, you can use two fingers to close it out. Or you can tap it, close it out. Three fingers hold. If you, three, if you use your three fingers hold, that's how you get to it. And you can close it out. So let's get to, let's go to, for the sake of this video, I like to go to Apple. Apple website. So say if you want to bring up your dock. And you're like, where's the dock? It's kind of two ways to do it. So one way is you could just bring the actual, can you see the cursor? Bring it all the way down. Keep going down with your finger and it'll bring it up. Now, if you keep going down even more, it'll bring you to like the multitasking screen. See? So remember, you can use one finger and keep scrolling down. Keep scrolling with your finger down. And then it'll bring you to your multi, uh, to, to your dock. Another way is command, well, hold command. And then... <clears throat> It's a bunch of different shortcuts and things you can do in command. Like you see all this private tab. That's and every time you hit hold command, depending where you at, it it, it may uh, show something different. So let's get out of here and let's hit command from this screen and hold it. Wait, move this other way. Hold command. And now, if you want to bring up your dock from here, you just hit command. You hit command option and D. Well, that's from when you're in a screen like this. So. So if you hit command, option D, see, then it'll bring up your actual, uh, your dock. So that's the second way. So you can either do it the easy way and just keep scrolling down, or you can hold command, option D, and it'll bring it up. And then let's see, if you hold command in here again, we got to move this up way and then hold command, then it'll bring you, you can go to home. So if you want to, say if you want, okay, let's go back here. So you can go command H, it'll bring you home. So you don't actually have to do the three finger gesture. You can actually go somewhere, wherever you at, hold command, hit H. Now that's from the MacBook. You know, the Magic Keyboard does all these tips and tricks. And uh, most of the these tips and tricks, the actual MacBook do too. This is all from the actual MacBook. All those tips and tricks like that with the command and command H and command copy. You know, for those who don't own any Apple products, never had a Mac, never bought the Magic Keyboard, those, you know, now you know some of those commands. If you hold it, you can even go command space. It'll bring it down to the search. Now that's another way to get there too, to the spotlight. You get two fingers gesture down. Let's do it again. Two fingers gesture down, so. And you don't actually, I know you hear me clicking, but you can actually tap. That's one thing. And it comes, a lot of people kept asking me, do you have to uh, click, click in? Do you have to, no, you can, anything you want, you can actually go there, tap it. I don't know if you had that installed. Let's go to Google. Now let's go to, go, go, go right here. See, you can just tap. You don't actually have to um, click it down. And it's just so many gestures, this thing do. It's, you can actually do the exact, just like on a MacBook or a Magic Keyboard. Let's go back to the home. So you can pinch the zoom. It, the keyboard, the trackpad works flawless. If anybody told you the trackpad, it's not like the Magic Keyboard, then I tell you the truth. It's super smooth. But it's not like the the Bridge Pro Plus, the Bridge Pro Plus. It's that's <laughs> do not buy that keyboard. But this one is exactly like the. Now you can bring it all the way out to pinch out, and it uh take you to where you can add more private mode stuff like that too. But it is super smooth. Three fingers. Now another thing I want to show you guys is how to delete an app. So you don't actually have to physically touch the screen anymore. You don't have to touch the screen for anything no more. So you just hold it down. 
and then it's going to bring you to you know different options let's see what's the app i don't actually need anymore let's see if i can delete this one see just go there and delete it it's going to ask you do you want to delete it boom simple now you probably wonder how do you get to like the uh your notification or your um your Bluetooth menu and your Wi-Fi menu and everything like that. So you just hit, go to the top corner and you hit that. Yeah, it's just that simple. Car insurance stuff, I don't want that. But yeah, so you go up here, you just hit that. You can even drag it up and I will go over here. Now you can turn, and you can like, like a force press, hold that down and it'll bring you to that. Now you can hold it down again. It'll bring you to even more even more options so even with this you don't have to physically touch the screen anymore you can just drag it down drag it up drag it down simple same thing as over here over here drag it up drag it down now you can actually hold it down to bring it to get to your night mode dark mode and true tone things of that nature you can just get to your screen mode screen recording your music you can hold that down same thing to bring it closer to bring it bigger same thing in here with the screen mirroring. Anything in here that you can pretty much, let's see, I don't know if you can do this one. Yeah, okay, so you can control your light. The light, that's neat. Okay, so yeah, that's how you get to there. But yeah, I just wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, I just wanted to bring you guys, yeah, just a couple tips and tricks if you didn't know how just to get the best experience out of your folio, uh, folio touch. And there's just so many things you can do. Like even in here, you can do the tracking speed and make that fast and natural scrolling. So it feels more real, uh, tap to click. This for me came on. Some people said for them, it didn't come on where you have to, now I can't just touch. I have to actually click it, but it came on for me. I guess maybe in the update it did that. And here's a two finger secondary click that you can do. So that's in general, and then you go from general, and then you go to trackpad for that one. So that's how you get there. But um, yeah, this is just a quick video to show you how to get the best maximum experience from your touch folio, your folio touch. You know, so I love all the gestures. This is the reason why I I can't buy the magic keyboard again is because of, it's just so many gestures just even so many different ways to set this up like it's i can go all the way back you can't you can't do any of these things with the magic keyboard any of this and if you like me you want you want your money's worth you want to be able to do everything and this keyboard is not lacking anything you have a spot for the apple pencil the crayon here and somebody asked me i'm gonna close this up one person asked me, does this lock? Yes. They said, does, does this actually keep it locked? There's a magnet on there, so it won't open up. See, you cannot open it like that. And then when you flip it back, it's another magnet here. And then you can keep, you get you to keep the crayon, the Logitech crayon here, or the Apple Pencil, or just keep it there to charge it. But it's just, <clears throat> it's so many different things that you can just do. Ooh with this keyboard. It's nothing you can really do on a Magic Keyboard that you can't do on here. Plus you got your function, function rows, plus you got protection. And I understand a lot of people, they feel like this hinge is no good for them and I understand that, you know, to each own. But to me, this the hinge is perfect. It, it can it do anything. You can find the angle that's good for you. So for me, it's perfect, you know. You just gotta play around with it, but this hinge can go this far all the way to right here. And it's pretty sturdy. Could it be stronger? Yes, of course. You know, anything could be stronger. But one thing, and people say, you know, someone left a comment and said, you know, it's not strong enough for when they had a bid. I think I said that, I mentioned that in the last video. But for me, when I had the Magic Keyboard, I only have about a week and a half. But when I had it in the bid, because of the way it is, and if you have an angle like this and it just sits there floating, the whole thing fall backwards. And without any protection, if you fall off your bed, if you ain't, or if you fall off the couch and or you outside or say you're at a, you know, at a coffee spot or something and it falls off, your iPad is gone. <laughs> now you got even more trouble. If this falls off, this falls, see this? 
See this rubber? You don't have to worry about it. And even with this, look how raised that is. That fall, you don't have you don't have no problem. This is this is to me the best keyboard that you can get for your iPad Pro 11 inch. I, you know, I couldn't recommend it more. This is like my third, fourth video on this, and I love this keyboard. I can't I can't brag about it more. And people was asking about the battery life. That's another thing I want to touch on real quick. Was the battery life? And I think the battery life is is great. It doesn't really drain hardly. And as long as you keep these lights off, you get even more. You you may drain a half a percent or a percent an hour, if that. It's not even it's not even noticeable. To be honest, I haven't charged this since. Let's see if I can go to it. Uh, see if it shows when the last time I charged it. Um. I know it wasn't today, Tuesday. I charged it yesterday. What's today? Wednesday yeah, at 7.41. So 7.41 Tuesday, I charged it. And I pretty much be using the heavy. It say an hour, five minutes screen on time. I don't know how accurate that is because I've been using it off and on so much. I mean, I use my phone a lot and I use my iMac and I use my MacBook, but I use this so much. It's, it's great when you want to bring out an actual laptop, wait for it to turn on and all this. So... That's what I really got it for. Some people complain about the weight, but you gotta understand the, the iPad is light, right? But if you add anything to an iPad, like even a Magic Keyboard, it's heavy. It's going to be heavy. Like if you don't want weight to your iPad, don't add a keyboard on here. That's what the number one thing I don't understand that people say. It's too heavy. I can't. It's too bulky. It's a keyboard case. What do you want? You want lightness or you want protection? Because for me, I'd rather have a little bulkiness and it protects my. $800 iPad, the, it being light like the Magic Keyboard, where the Magic Keyboard is not light, but it has no protection. Like, I, I don't want to, I don't have money to just waste. I mean, some people may, and that's cool with them, but it's not cool with me. I want a case that does everything. And this one is the only case as of right now for the iPad Pro that does, every, that does everything. But it's another video. This your boy Brandon. Yeah, that's right, the coolest YouTuber ever. Leave me a comment and let me know if there's anything else I didn't cover or I missed or you want me to go over and discuss about the keyboard or the iPad. Just leave me a comment and let me know. But don't forget to like and subscribe because I'm on the road to a thousand. I, um, I drop videos pretty much every day. You know, not just tech like I'm saying in the other video. I drop other videos. I wish you guys checked those out too. And um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I love you. And to the next one. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, and hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button to join B&M Gang. Game.